Okay, let's take a brief look at hydraulic fracture stimulation. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, this is just kind of a general um, uh, description of the process. Uh, as you're out there drilling your horizontal well, this would be a lateral, uh, coming down from a pad and, and you know going out horizontally. So you've got your you've got your um, hole cased. Uh, you bring a perforation gun in and you blow out holes through the casing. <clears throat> and these might be at an angle, uh, 120 degree angle. Uh, there, there are different uh, geometrical configurations that are often used, but you're kind of opening up the uh, well to inject um, fluid into at very high pressure into the surrounding formation. So now you can see here we're at the toe of the well and we're pushing uh, frac water in at very high pressures and we're opening up a couple types of fractures. <coughs> These uh, fractures the two varieties of fractures that we're interested in are the hydraulic fractures and these are fractures that are generally vertical in extent and you know can be very large they can be a couple hundred feet in height for example and have half widths of uh, a few hundred feet and they open in response to uh, tension so these are basically tensile fractures they tend to be relatively quiet and we don't uh, hear them that much, comparatively. The other kinds of fractures are the local fractures, the natural fractures in the reservoir. And in this diagram here, again, this comes from Marathon Oil, but we have these local fractures, and they deform in response to shear. So we've actually, um, uh, these may be critically stressed, so we've increased pore pressure and brought these uh, fractures into failure. Now this is just a close-up view of a fracture and you can see they're pumping propant into the fracture to hold the fractures open. These little grains here, once the pressure is reduced, uh, they hold the fracture open so the gas can flow into the well and be produced. So this process just goes on and on. We put a plug in the um, uh, well, this this area over to the right was already fracked. We bring a perforation gun in. We blow holes through the casing again. And so we have a situation like this. This is the uh, frack that we just uh, generated. And then we're ready to go again. So we pump in the frack fluid at very high pressure. We create a new set of um, hydraulic fractures. And... Uh, 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 frack the uh, uh, previously existing uh, natural fractures in the area so that we're creating a large stimulated reservoir volume and um, that's that's what you want to do in your well so you go from stage to stage to this plug to plug to plug and then you're fracking each uh, each interval so you may have several stages several frack stages along the entire length of your well if you were looking at this, you say, well, I didn't really do a very good job of <clears throat> uh, stimulating the reservoir. The, the, we've really missed a lot of volume here. But ideally, we'd like to maximize the stimulation of regions between stages, and a lot of effort goes into uh, designing the frack and uh, trying to maximize the stimulated reservoir volume. So this is something a little bit more like what you might want to do. Of course, these would be have various orientations depending upon the uh, uh, natural fracture network that you encounter in your reservoir. So, um, the hydraulic fracture stimulation, the next time we're going to talk about uh, microseismicity and hydraulic fracture stimulation and the relationship of the well orientation to the orientations of the maximum minimum principal stresses and uh, and so on as we continue on. So we'll uh, continue our discussions the next time. Uh, thanks for joining us.